What is up VR nerds, welcome back to a new video. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at something a bit special, how to make a VR game without a VR headset. Either if it's because you don't have one with you, or simply to speed up the development time, or even because you don't want to mess with your hair today, you will see this has plenty of great uses. So without further ado, let's get started and make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell to not miss the next video. Okay, so I'm in an empty Unity project right now. I've simply downloaded the Unity XR toolkit in the package manager and that's it. Now, as you might already know, to complete the setup for VR, we need to enable it in the player settings. And we have two ways of doing that, either the old way for version below 2019.4 or the new way using the new XR plugin manager for version above 2019.4. Now, if we do the old setup by going to the player settings, XR settings, enable virtual reality supported and add these supported devices. So Oculus for Oculus devices and open VR for open VR devices. As you can see, we also have another plugin in the list called Mock HMD that we can add. But what is this thing? So as the name suggests, this plugin is used to fake that we are currently having a headset plugged. If it tells Unity that even if we don't have any headset, we still want it to do the computation for VR. You know, the rendering for each eyes and all of that good stuff. And that comes really handy because it means that by using this, you can still test the performance of your game without a VR headset. Now, if you are using the old setup, make sure to put the mock H in the plugin at the end of the list. This way, the game will still try to launch for Oculus, then for OpenVR, and if it fails, it will use by default the mock HMD. Now, if you are using the new setup, you basically have the same thing, which is called Unity Mock HMD and that you can enable in the XR plugin management like the other plugin providers. Now that we have Unity set up for VR, let's try this. So at this moment, I don't have any headset plugged on my computer. Let's see if it still try to do the computation. And here you go if I click on play. As you can see on the game window, I have a display for each eyes and I can even display both eyes at the same time. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you already knew about this, where this button, uh, you can select which eye you want to display on screen or even the occlusion mag. Okay, now this was to fake a headset to test the performance of the game, but how can we fake an input, for example? So let me show you. I'm going to make an empty game object called H in the info manager and add a new component with the same name. So H in the info manager. Now let's double click on this script to open it. So my goal with this script is to get some information about if a headset is plugged or not to, to let us trigger any behavior that we want in that case. And we can do this by actually writing at the top using unity engine.xr. Finally, the information that we need are inside the XR settings. As you can see, with this class, we can actually access the eye resolution, the name of the device, and some other interesting info, like if a device is active or not. Now, I just want to test these info, so I'm just going to write in the console debug.log is device active plus XR settings that is device active and the same but for the loaded device name so debug.log device name is plus xr settings dot loaded device name and there you go now let's save our script and test our game okay so as you can see if i click on play we can see that the console is telling me that first we try to load for oculus but failed then we try to load for OpenVR, but failed again. And finally, we load the mock HMD SDK. But as you can see, it is telling me that uh, the device active is true, even if uh, we have no headset plugged. And that's because we are currently using the mock HMD plugin. But if we go again to the player settings and that we remove the mock HMD, which can be done in the same way in the new XR plugin management system, by the way. Now, if we click on play, 
you can see that nothing is loaded and that active device is set to false. So to sum up, we can use this information to know if we have a loaded device or not. So let's go back to our script. And now to finally know if we have no device, we can do if we have no device active, it means that we have no headset plugged, else if we have no device active, but that the loaded device name is mock HMD, then it means that we have no headset plugged, but that we are faking one to test our performance. Oh, and by the way, important note here, the name Mock HMD is the same used with the old VR setup, but with the new uh, setup, it's a Mock HMD display. So we need also to check that this name is not used to make this work for every setup. So the old one and the new one. And finally else, we have a headset plugged that is using a device name that we can find with XR settings that loaded device name. And there you go. Now, basically with this, you can trigger anything that you want in one of these case. So the three uh, case with a headset plug, with no headset plug or by faking it with the mock HMD plugging, which can be really useful. For example, to tell the user that uh, your headset is not working with your game or for you to display some information on screen, but most importantly, to change the input of your game to be tested with a mouse and keyboard and not a VR controller, for example. And this is what I will show you now. So when planning this tutorial, I wanted to go over writing the code for this, but in the meantime, Unity has launched the new version of its new uh, Unity XR toolkit. And I have the good news to tell you that they have integrated in their new SDK, an XR player simulator that does exactly this job, which is making you test the input of your game without a VR headset. And this is what we will have a look at now. So how can we set up the XR player simulator? First thing first, as usual, we need to have an XR rig in our scene, well, to be able to use the controller and the headset all together. Now for this, I'm going to right click in the hierarchy, go to XR and click on room scale XR rig action base. Now I know that this might trigger some people because uh, this is not what we used before in my tutorial series with the XR toolkit. Uh, we use the uh, device-based XR rig and not the action-based one, uh, which you can still find here, by the way, in device-based room scale rig. And don't worry, this is just a version of the XR rig that works with the new input system from Unity. And if you are interested in learning how this new input system works in VR, let me uh, know in the comment section below and I will cover it in a next video. Now, when we create the action-based action rig, as you can see, we need to fill all the action that we want for all the behavior of the rig. Now, instead of creating them all, Unity has already pre-made some action that I'm going to use. For this, we need to go to the package manager, select the XR interaction toolkit package that we have previously downloaded, and in the additional package, download the default input actions. Now that it is downloaded, as you can see, if we go to sample XR toolkit and then default input action, we can see here all the default input Unity has made for us. Uh, so to enable them for our XR rig, we can click on the default for the left controller and click here at the top on add action base controller default. We can do the same for the right controller. And finally, now if we go to edit project settings, preset manager, we can now see that we have set these two presets. And what's left uh, for us to do is to say right in the filter for the right controller preset and left for the filter of the left controller preset. Now, if we click back on the XR rig, as you can see, the action has not been set yet, but if we remove the actual XR rig and that create a new one, ta-da, we have now our XR rig ready with all the actions set up correctly. Now, a final step is required to activate these action and it's to add an input action manager somewhere in our scene, so on the rig, for example, and drag there the XR A default input actions.
Okay, there you go. Now everything is ready. You could test uh, this and it would work in VR. I'm sorry we had to go through this setup in this video, but as something has changed in the meantime, I thought that uh, it was better so that everyone is on the same page. Now, as you can see, if I click on play, as I have no VR headset, the camera freeze and I am not able to do anything in my scene as before. And this is why we will use the device simulator to control this XR rig even without a VR headset. So to set up the device simulator, we need to go back to the package manager. And if we select again XR toolkit, we can see that we can download here the XR device simulator. Perfect. And now from here, that's really simple. Now that it is downloaded, we can search in our project XR device simulator and drag the prefab in our scene. So as you can see, uh, this component has a lot of parameters, which are basically all the binding used to link a key from a keyboard to an action from the XR rig. So I don't know if, if I double click on grip action, for example, you can see that this is linked with the G key on my keyboard in the input controller. So we'll be able to fake that we grab an object by pressing the G key on the keyboard. Also, we have some additional setting here with the speed of the movement of the control, for example. But instead of checking what key does what, here, let's try directly our game to see how it works with the XR simulator. Okay, now if I click on play, so the first thing that we need to know is how to control here the camera. So to control the camera, we actually need to right click with the right click mouse. And now, as you can see, I can move the camera left to right or up to down by moving the mouse. Now, actually, another control is to get closer or far from an object using the scroll wheel. And as you can see, it moves the camera accordingly. Now, so as you can see, we are able to modify the position of the camera when we grab it with the right mouse button, but we can actually do exactly the same uh, with the left hand or the right hand. So for this, let me just leave play mode and I'm going to go under the left hand controller and the right hand controller, right click, go to 3D object cube. So this will create a cube as a child of both the left hand and the right hand. So I'm going to select these two cube and scale them down to something a bit small, like, yes, maybe uh, this will work and maybe increase them on the uh, forward axis. Now we can remove the box collider because we just want the visual. And now if I click on play again, so to take control of one of the hand, it's not uh, with the right mouse button that we do it for the camera, but it's using the left caps button. And now as you can see, if I press it, I can use it and move it in the same way as I did for the camera. So by maintaining this button and moving my mouse, as you can see, it move left to right, up or down. And I can even uh, get closer or far using the scroll wheel in the same way as the camera. And we can do this basically for uh, also the right hand. So with instead the space button. And as you can see, I can do the same. And there you go. I can even control two objects at the same time. So for example, I can have the camera here with the left hand or with the right hand, as you can see it follows, or maybe I can grab the three all together. And now as you can see, all of the objects are moving and I can get far or close also. We have also a control to uh, rotate and it's using uh, the control button. So as you can see, if I press the control and the right mouse button, I'm able to have a look at my scene from left to right. And I can also do the same. So if I take control with the caps lock for the left controller and then I press on the control button, I can move. And by the way, you can also do this with the click on the mouse wheel. So I can 
do exactly the same. I can even tilt the object using both uh, the click on the mouse wheel and the mouse wheel itself. So I know that this needs a bit of uh, coordination with the key, but uh, with a, a bit of uh, training, uh, as you can see, it will be uh, really easy. But that is noted. So we can move, we can rotate and all, that's great. But we can also interact with an object. And so to show you this, I'm going to simply create uh, an easy interactable. So first I will need a table for this so that I can put uh, maybe over there. Uh, I will create also another cube, which will be a bit smaller and that I will put uh, above this table. We can uh, set it to black. I have here a black material in my scene that I've used to color the plane. And I can drag it also on this cube that we want to interact with. And so if I take this cube that I write a rigid body, but also uh, XR grab interactable, we should be able to grab this cube using the XR device simulator. And I will show you how. So if we now click on play, Okay, so here you go. I can still move and get the left controller as well as the right. Maybe we can uh, get a little closer like this. Perfect. And even move. And so as you can see, if I take control of the left hand, I can maybe uh, rotate it also and pointing towards the interactable. And as you can see, it changed the ray to white. And now if I press on uh, the action key, so the grab key, as we saw before, as you can see, it grabs the object and I can even move it around like if I were grabbing it in VR. And so basically that's it. And if I release it, for example, as you can see, I can place it on the table. And basically that's it. You have now seen how we can basically interact with an object and control both the camera, but also the end using the XR device simulator. Now you can do, you can do more than this. You can actually uh, trigger and activate object that you are using exactly in the same way that we would in VR, but using other control that you can find here if uh, you go under uh, this component and you will be able to see what a uh, key is doing what for the VR rig. So for example, we have the trigger action. If we double click on it, the trigger action is trigger with the left button mouse. And uh, it's the same for all the things. So we have the primary button, which is B, the secondary button, which is N, and uh, it's the same for all of the other components. So go take a look at this, but you should be fine with just the simple control of moving and activating an object. And this is how you can take control and test quickly your game without using a VR headset. And there you go, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, which might be the first tutorial that I made without actually a VR headset from start to finish. Weird for a VR tutorial, I know. As always, thank you for watching till the end. And if you'd like to support the channel, make sure to like this video so that it will be recommended to other VR devs just like you. A big, big shout out to the new Patreon who joined lately. And if like them, you want to help the channel and have access to exclusive content like the source code of all of my project and exclusive tutorial join us the link is in the description below anyway thank you for watching and see you in the next one